Hi, how are you doing? Um, you probably noticed that recently I was on a bit of a roll and I was making and putting up videos every day and even commented to a few people that I was doing that really specifically on purpose and then suddenly I stopped. Uh, it wasn't on purpose. It wasn't part of the plan. Uh, unfortunately, last week, my wife slipped over uh, on, a, on something that had been spilled on a supermarket floor and broke her arm in two places, uh, both her elbow and her wrist, both ends of the same bone. Um, it's a bit, a bit traumatic for her, and obviously it's caused a bit of a problem with childcare and work. So uh, that's why there haven't been so many videos. Uh, we're back up at the hospital tomorrow for a review with the orthopaedic surgeons to make sure the treatment's right and that they haven't missed anything, because um, so far she's only been seen by the emergency doctors. But anyway, that aside, let's get back to the regular schedule. Um, you'll see that we've had some, some of the more, uh, more amusing, sl slightly less serious videos up recently. This one's going to be a little bit more serious. I, I started recently looking at defining some of the terms and concepts that I use. And we looked at classical pugilism in, in the video recently. Go check it out. Uh, it's quite interesting. Um, and it occurred to me that probably the most important thing to define that I haven't at any point is English martial arts. After all, this channel is known as English martial arts. I teach English martial arts. I run the English martial arts academy and I use the term regularly. So I thought it might be interesting to, to have a bit of a chat about where that term comes from and why we use it. Now, as a, as a term, it was pretty much first coined by Terry Brown, who uh, runs the Company of Meisters. He teaches, I believe he still teaches, not 100% sure, um, either in, it's, it's just north of London, I believe, somewhere in that region. Um, Terry published a book many, many years ago uh, called English Martial Arts. Historical um, research in it is top notch. Um, thoroughly recommend it. Uh, very good read. Go, go buy it. I think it's still in print. If it isn't, it should be. Um, but as a term, it's kind of fallen into fairly common usage now. And a lot of groups like mine teach and, and study English martial arts. But what are English martial arts? Clearly, in the, the simplest possible term, they are any fighting arts that originate in England. But that doesn't really tell us a lot because an awful lot of things originate in England. There's a vast array of, of styles of swordplay that you could argue have some origin in England, even, even sport fencing. There's, a, there's an argument that some of that derives from Italian swordplay, but some of it clearly derives from, from English swordplay as well. Um, boxing, we can argue that that's an English martial art if we wanted to. Um, through to, to HEMA, to wrestling, to WWE. These are all things that are forms of fighting that originated in England. So as a term, it's not actually hugely helpful if we give it that broader definition. So what, what we tend to mean, uh, and by we, I'm really talking about myself and those people within my groups. When we use the term English martial arts, we're referring to historically authentic fighting systems that originated in England. So we're not looking at things that have evolved into sports. So you can effectively, you can get rid of freestyle wrestling. You can get rid of boxing. You can get rid of sports fencing. Um, and we look more at those things that have a, a historical lineage of one way or of one sort or another, whether that lineage is intact or broken. And that's a really interesting point because we can effectively split English martial arts into two quite distinct areas. Those areas that still have a direct lineage that takes us back in time. Um, and for those, those things, I'm looking at, at potentially things like the bare knuckle boxing that you see in the traveling communities of, of, of Britain. Um, looking at the folk wrestling systems that you see 
Um, so Cornish wrestling coming on in Westmoreland, uh, Devonshire wrestling, to a degree Lancashire wrestling and Catch as Catch Can, but that, that, that's a video all of its own because there's very much uh, a reasonable amount of debate over the origins of catch wrestling. Um, but we'll talk about that in another video. So we've got these where you, you can go and learn this, this art from somebody who was taught it, from somebody who was taught it, from someone who was taught it, all the way back in time to the point where the lineage just fades away and we can't, we can't follow it anymore because it's so old. Um, and those are fantastic. And, and to, a, a, a lot of, uh, to a lot of people, that's kind of what a martial art should be. But there's been a real move throughout the 20th century to kind of move away from these traditional English fighting systems to the point where at the end of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st century, a lot of these arts were at serious risk of dying out. And undoubtedly, some have just died out. So thankfully, there has been a bit of a move recently to try and reinvigorate some of these systems. Things like Cumberland and Westmoreland wrestling now has a fairly lively competition scene and they compete with the Scottish backhold guys and there are some other forms of backhold from around Europe and these people get together because the rule sets are very similar and you can compete on a relatively level playing field. Uh, Cornish wrestling still has a fairly fairly lively tournament scene in local fairs, village fates, uh, county fairs, that sort of thing in that part of the country. Um, and again it's growing in popularity. On a personal note, I think some of the backhold wrestling systems are, are absolutely fascinating. And they're full of things that would be really helpful to people that don't necessarily wrestle in backhold or really understand it, or even people that have never come across it. And I'm thinking specifically of MMA fighters there, because what backhold gives you is an ability to take somebody down from a clinch when they're attempting to stop you. So if you use freestyle wrestling, and most MMA fighters do, they use um, freestyle or Greco or wrestling like that as a basis for their wrestling within, uh, within mixed martial arts. And that, that allows you to shoot for takedowns. And, and they're fantastic at that. But it's less skilled at fighting from this over under clinch position. Greco, yeah, less so. But again, it's a very different sort of throw. And some of the subtleties involved in backhold wrestling, I think, translate fantastically well. But anyway, I've digressed. I have a tendency to do that. So we were talking about uh, traditional English fighting systems that have a living lineage, if you like. Which again leads us then to the other group, those traditional English fighting systems, which did die out or evolved beyond recognition. And those are effectively the ones that fall under the, 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 the category of HEMA, if you like, historical European martial arts. They've been recreated from original source material. And we're quite lucky in England in that there's quite a lot of it. There's very little from the medieval period, but there is some. And there are some people out there that are using um, manuscripts like the Harley and um, the uh, Cotton Titus and Ledl which are three medieval, late medieval, possibly early Tudor, you could argue, um, systems that focus on the two-handed sword, whether that's a long sword or, or a, 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 what we call a spy hander or what you see as like the great sword, the claymore type sword, we don't know for certain. Um, what we know, quite interestingly, is that Cotton Titus not just describes, doesn't just describe sword, it also describes staff. And the terminology is very similar. We don't know a lot about it, and the terminology is very difficult to interpret. But again, probably deserves a video all of its own at some point. But later, when we start hitting the, the Renaissance period and through to, to the sort of pre-World War I, we've got a huge amount of, of stuff out there looking at very much contrasting styles. We can look at Silver's Paradoxes of Defense and Brief Instructions Upon My Paradox of Defense. We can look at Swetnam and Saviolo, which whilst describing a system of sword play of an Italian master, it was, a, it was A, written by an Englishman, and B, it was taught in London during the Renaissance period. So you could argue that that's potentially an English martial art. You know, it's been English for well over 400 years. 
which I, I think is uh, it's probably good enough, really. Um, and then we can we can look at others. We can look through people like Hope, um, Scottish influence in there as well. But there's there's a vast amount Hale, uh, Wild, to through to the Small Sword people like Blackwell, um, through to the modern day and the classical pugilism. And these are all things that have been recreated from source material because either they've just simply died out or they've evolved beyond recognition. Now, there are some people out there who are putting together um, systems for weapons that are traditionally English, but we don't actually have a living lineage or a source material for. And I'm, I'm inherently cynical about them. I think you can make a very uh, good and effective fighting system from them. Absolutely. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you can't learn to fight with a weapon that we don't have source material for. But what I'm saying is that that fighting system that you create for that weapon has to be drawn from other sources. And those in themselves are unlikely to be English sources. So we look at some of the Anglo-Saxon, uh, Sax, Long Sax stuff. Is A lot of it is drawn from either modern knife fighting um, knowledge or from Bowie knife and other systems that we've got around Europe. And there are quite a lot that look at relatively heavy short cutting blades um does that mean it's not an english martial art difficult to say to be honest to me it's probably not but somebody else may disagree and that's that's perfectly valid so that's a very brief run through what english martial arts is in my group we study specifically certain things we look at elizabethan backsword uh, with or without companion weapons so sword and dagger sword and buckler we look at a little bit of two-handed sword, we look at a little bit of quarterstaff, and occasionally we look at polearm. Uh, on top of that, we look at classical pugilism, and we look at, at the moment, Lancashire catches catch can wrestling. I'm starting to introduce a little bit of backhold in there, but what I'd like to do is get a bit more involved in the Cumberland and Westmoreland wrestling scene and see what we can learn from that. Because if we can keep the focus as English martial arts, it kind of makes sense with the name. So um, that's where we are now. Keep your eyes open for the next video and please subscribe. I've just clicked over 6,000 subscribers, which was which fantastic. Really pleased. Thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate your support. Um, I've still got something fairly impressive. I say it's impressive. I hope it's impressive. Planned for when I hit 10,000 subscribers. So tell your mates, get them to subscribe too. Let's get to 10,000 as quickly as we can. And if you can spare a dollar, please support me on Patreon. And with that, I'll shut up and leave you to it. Take care.